we're at this really interesting point in the evolution of network automation and our journey towards autonomous networks. And uh, artificial intelligence and uh, network automation are increasingly becoming uh, intertwined. And and this close relationship really is driven by the complexity of, of the modern networks, you know, more demanding users. And at the end of the day, we have this need for greater efficiency, uh, resiliency, re reliability, and security. And so to address this need, we, we need to build networks, closed loop autonomous networks that sense, think, and act. And leveraging AI really presents a, a, a new opportunity to scale and enhance analytics for making sense of the data uh, and generating operational insights. So that sense function that, that, that I mentioned, and also assisting humans in some of the knowledge-based decision-making, um, you know, the think function, both of which today are still very heavily human-centric. So AI enhances automation to, to turn insight into action, uh, closing that loop and, and integrating with that strong automation foundation that that we've established over many years across uh, Nokia with our SDN controllers uh, and advanced programmable automation platforms. And thus, we now start to deliver on that vision of enabling sophisticated networks that can adapt to changing conditions, uh, optimize performance, and proactively address issues before they start to impact users. Uh, in terms of how we see the delivery of these AI benefits into the network, it's really through two main AI use case categories. So the first uh, category of use cases that we see are the predictive AI capabilities and are our more classical AI and machine learning capabilities, those that analyze vast streams to help predict and, and mitigate possible disruptions before they escalate. And these are use cases that we already have deployed in our networks today for many years, in fact, and being used by our network operators. You know, there are use cases like baselining, anomaly detection, forecasting, and, and, and advanced correlation and, and incident management. But the second main category of use cases that we're now seeing are the generative AI-related use cases, primarily delivered in the form of assistance. And these use cases are, are largely powered by large language models and, and, and thus really have the opportunity to redefine that human to computer and human to network interface and significantly simplify some of the more complex tasks that we do today, like programming the network and installation and troubleshooting. And not only can we improve productivity and accelerate time to value for existing network operator users, but I think the most exciting outcome of this is that we start to democratize the use of the automation platform. Something that was typically only used by expert network engineers in the past is now available to a wider audience. And it's not about replacing the human. It's, it's really about scaling the business by you know, empowering a, a wider range of users with more assistance and reserving that highly skilled but more scarce expert, expert network engineer for the tasks that really demand their skills. In terms of observations, as we investigate, develop, and, and deploy some of these AI capabilities with our customers, we, we have a few instructive insights. I think if we first start at looking at the use cases themselves, there are varying degrees of readiness and maturity and, and thus adoption of those predictive, use predictive AI use cases. And customers are actively evaluating them. But where we see the most success is when the problem or the use case is clearly defined. And we focus on solving that problem using the right technology. Uh, AI can be extremely powerful, but AI may not be the best or most efficient solution for all use cases. So when we look at those use cases, we need to look at them in the context of what we're really trying to solve and, and integrate some of those things with AI and with other tools that already may exist. And when we do use AI and machine learning, we found it to be very efficient in identifying patterns and predictions and those elusive problems but we've discovered that operational insight alone is not sufficient. And coming back to that autonomous network we talked about before, in order for it to be impactful to the network operator, we really need to marry that to a decision-making process and push it into the network through our, our advanced programmable automation platforms like we have across the Nokia portfolio today. And I think from a use case perspective, the third probably main observation is now with the introduction of generative AI, we have the potential for a much wider range of use cases and will likely be much more transformative. Uh, users will be empowered to do more with a set of their own personal network assistance, uh, including knowledge assistance. So getting explanations about functionality, how to use or access certain capabilities in the system. Uh, troubleshooting assistance, you know, finding the next best action for resolving network issues. 
And particularly in the automation space, artifact assistance will become very useful. So this is, you know, leveraging the platform where we, we push value into the network and, and value is enabled through those programmable network artifacts, intents, workflows, and customized views. And so the artifact assistant really will be start to become a compelling part of the automation uh, view. But in addition to those use cases, we've also seen some other observations around infrastructure and technology enablers, and that's data in the models. So AI use cases rely heavily on voluminous and diverse data um, to build and train the models. And so we, we see that employing a mature data strategy that takes into account, you know, identifying, collecting and storing the right data, as well as taking into account privacy and security requirements is going to be key. And in addition, we also see that we will be starting to leverage specialized models and different models. And therefore, as a result of this kind of incorporation of new data and, uh, and a rapidly evolving landscape, it means we also have to have robust LLM ops and machine learning infrastructure, machine learning ops infrastructure, uh, and flexible deployment op options to smoothly accommodate that content into the network. So it's an interesting time as we integrate AI more extensively into the network automation domain. And, and, and at Nokia, we're, we're excited to be working with our customers to evaluate and exploit the benefits that AI capabilities will bring uh, both to their existing systems, as well as changes to the human interaction. And we're very excited to be part of that journey. Mm -hmm.